Uh, always a blessing. A blessing to be with you. The thing about you is that you travel, you speak, and it's always about something uh, exciting and new. Mm. Mm. Things are unfolding at a very rapid rate right now, aren't oh, they? Oh yeah, yeah. Th- yeah. Things have been accelerating not only in America, what's happening in the world and Israel, Middle East, so much. So that we were just talking before and saying it's so much is happening that even in, in a few months we can't even plan out what we're going to speak about because so much is happening prophetically. Uh, today is to, to talk about Jonathan's book. It's called The Book of Mysteries and uh, you'll find out all about it before we're through but but let's talk about mysteries yeah. because the mysteries are happening everywhere right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One recently happened in New York City, That's and right. you and I talked about yeah. it before we went on. Yeah, this is, you know, the, the har- harbingers have not stopped just because, you know, America has not stopped in its descending from God. And so that's, for those who don't know the harbinger, it's the warning signs, the yes. prophetic signs. Well, when you look at the template of the harbinger, the, the book that I wrote, uh, of the last days of Israel, they were worshiping a god. The god was Baal or Baal. Mm-hmm. So Baal was the god that they turned to when they turned away from God. He's the god of sexual immorality. He's the god that they offered their children to. He's the god that they persecuted the prophets to. He's the god of really uh, just when, you, when a nation has known God, rejects God, this is, this is in one form or another it's Baal. So now we're watching America, a nation founded by God, and before founded for the glory of God, founded after the pattern of Israel, and now we're watching America turn away, the same pattern of Israel, and we're watching America endorse sexual immorality, uh, offer, killing millions of its unborn children, per, beginning to persecute believers, and, and the same thing. It's, it's about, so so th- could the sign of Baal actually appear in America? Mm-hmm. And the answer is amazingly so. I mean, you think like, well, why? Why would anybody have anything to do with anything with Baal? Most people don't even know about Baal except believers, you know. But it happened. Th- it happened very recently in New York City. I, w- I went down there to witness when they unveiled it. In New York City, they they constructed a replica of the arch to Baal, the arch from uh, Syria, Palmyra, Syria, where they were the major center of Baal worship. The people would go through the arch to worship the god Baal. They, they reconstructed this arch in New York City, right in uh, City Hall Park, right actually you, within sight of, gro- of Ground Zero. And, all. and they had this big ceremony. They, uh, they had it covered with a sheet. They unveiled it. They had music, Middle Eastern music playing that you can imagine played during the worship of Baal. They had leaders. They had the... the the um, deputy mayor of New York there to celebrate, and this one. Sh- and if you, when you read the harbinger, it said that when they erected these harbingers, they almost always use one word, and that word is defiance. They use the word mm. defiance over and over again because in ancient Israel, before they were destroyed, they kept doing these things in the spirit of defiance. Well, the woman says we are doing this as an act of defiance. Mm. So here, the sign, the Baal, the the sign of Baal. They, they even had, by the way, they even had a plaque on the floor that said Temple of Baal. And so here the sign of Baal, sign of a nation that once knew God, that is turned away, that is, that is called evil good and good evil in America, in New York, the, the place of the harbingers. And interesting because they were actually rebuilding, a te- the, the, see the building, the Temple of Baal was destroyed recently in Syria, ancient temple by ISIS. Yes. Now ISIS, now in the harbinger, you see, one of the first harbingers is the sign of the terrorist, and the Assyrians they attack Israel. It's a sign of it was a sign of judgment. Well, the Assyrians are the inventors of terrorism. I mean, they're the, they're the fathers of all terrorism. ISIS is literally descended from the Assyrians. It's literally the Assyrian Empire. They literally have the blood of many of them have the blood of the Assyrians. They're from uh, Iraq and Syria, and they you know the ancient Assyrians would practice decapitation, and then they would display it exactly what ISIS does. And so here in the Harbinger, ancient Israel before it was destroyed, they're rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed. Well now, literally, in New York City, America was rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed. I mean, literally. I mean, exact. Hmm. So very, very ominous thing. And it's a mystery that's not a mystery. That is to say it's been unveiled in our day. Anyone with eyes to see and ears to hear uh, can see what's happening. Yes, with eyes to, <laughs> to see. Most do not. You know, they're crazy. If they knew what they were doing, they never do it. But believe, there were believers there witnessing this too. Wow. Yeah. Uh, your book, by the way, mm-hmm. and I want, wanted to uh, just open this up uh, to the table of contents. 
And it has a list of mysteries yes. with page numbers. Yes. And I, and I believe it's one per page. Yes. And, it's, and yes. Guess, guess what? There are 365 of them. That is right. And, and as I read this, and, I, and I've read uh, uh, almost yes. all of this book, I must say, wow. uh, because it pulls you along. Yes. And, and it really has 365 mysteries in it. Yes. He said, what in the world <laughs> could he be talking about? How can you get 365 <laughs> mysteries? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, if the harbinger is the revealing of a mystery of the Shemitah, this is literally is it, hundreds of mysteries which I believe are, you know, God is, there's no end to God. There's no end to his works. No, and so I believe some of the greatest mysteries, myst- it has mysteries of the age or mysteries, hidden mysteries from the writings of the rabbis, you know, mysteries of the end times, mysteries of, that you'll never see in English in the Bible, but it's there, incredible things in the Bible. Um, mm-hmm. Mysteries of of heaven, you know, also mysteries of your life, because you know that's part of the mystery. You know, we, we come to the Lord; it's a mystery. Why are we here? You know, so so all those things. And the the other thing is that yeah, I feel that we are going through some very dramatic times ahead, and so that God's people have to be strong. It's not just to know, okay, you know, I have the I have my prophecy chart right, but you need to be strong. You know, so it's not only not only to be ho- hopefully not only just to be blown away by the Lord, which mm-hmm. is awesome always. But also, at the end of each mystery, there's a way to apply the mystery to your life to change your life. It's about it's about getting strong. It's about changing your life for for victory. You know. Well, once uh, a mystery has been revealed to you, it becomes a challenge. And yeah. as we discussed uh, earlier, before we came on today, uh, it, it occurred to me while reading your book that a, a mystery is a marvelous teaching tool. Yeah. Because if you say the word mystery, people say. What is it? I, I want to know about the mystery. And right? God is the God. Yeah, and God is the God of revelation, reveal. That means take away the veil. That means, you know, so, so the, exactly. And so these are things that many of them have come to me over the years of te- you know teaching. Others came as I'm writing it. You know, I had it writing this, and I really had it, the biggest challenge was how to concentrate because there's so much in the mystery. Yeah. How to put it on one page. You know, that was the biggest challenge I had. You know, and so every day I had a, I said, Lord, just give it. And I had about this about I did had to do four a day to get this thing because it's about twice as much as is in the harbinger of anything. So they have that and the other thing is I felt like with the harbinger I built a story around it. So in a sense so that you're there is a man who goes into the desert and he meets a man called the teacher. And the teacher takes him on a one year odyssey or one year journey on mountaintops, caverns, secret chambers, chambers mm-hmm. of vessels. Yeah. And every day he opens up a mystery of God. So it has the story and it's it's the teacher giving that but so therefore as you're doing it, you're really taking along. You're taken along the journey, and 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 it's really to you, you know. And so that, so therefore, because there's three, it's a year in the desert or a 365. You can read it as a devotional, except different from a devotional. You're getting a mystery every day. It's not, you know, like a, a nice insight, but it's a, it's that. And but you can read it right through. People are reading right through. It's, it's it's concentrated, but read it right through. And then there are others who will do what you just look at the table of contents. I'll read it anywhere. I like this yeah. mystery. So you can read it forwards, backwards, sideways. Yeah. And, you know, but, yeah. but, but it's but the idea is there's there's no end to the awesome, amazing mysteries of God. What, what is a devotional after all? A devotional is, is being surprised by a revelation from God, and that's a mystery. Mm-hmm. And. and it's a good thing to be surprised. Yes. Uh, we talked a minute ago about uh, this incredible thing that happened in New York City, the, the Gate of Baal yes. from Palmyra and, yes. and this ceremony and so forth. Yes. Uh, we're living in the age of apostasy, I yes. think. And you have yes. a, a mystery of the apostasy. Yes, yes. Now this is something, this is an example of the Bible is so amazing. I mean one word has so much and people miss the word. We, we know that in the end times there'll be, it says there'll be a great falling away. We know yeah. that. And we can see that. And that, the, word in, the word in the Bible is apostasia. You know, and so we get apostasy. Now we hear what's apostasy? Well it's the falling away from faith. So we're, we witness that. We see that. But there's more to the word. There's a hidden thing in that word that explains exactly what's happening. Apostasia come in Greek, it literally means to depart from the state of being. That's what it means. So here, what does it mean? In the end times, when you see a departure, for, uh, the, actually the rejection of faith, you will also see a departure from the state of being. What does that mean? Men, you will see men departing from the state of manhood. Women from the state of womanhood. Marriage from the state of marriage. Family from the state of family. Children from the state of children. Humanity from human. 
So the word destabilization comes to mind. That from, goes with it. it. It all goes with it. See, you know, if if creation came from the word, yeah. If you if you go away from the word, you're going to go. You're going to depart from creation. Okay. So this is. He, he, I see what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And so apostasy uh, means to move away from from a, the state of a state, from the state of, of or a fir- yeah. firm. Uh, firmly established location, departing a location, yeah, or yeah, or a state of a state of being, or a state of being. You know, you know, the departure from these things. Yeah, uh, and yet, what do you read today, or what do you see on the web? You see things like gender reassignment, All over. and you know, All over. And the the, the clear cut. Re- uh, distinction between man and woman is being blurred now. Wiped out. There's every gradation yes. you can think of. The, and yes. That's what you're talking. Exactly, about. and it's and it's all there in that ancient word. You know, so in the <laughs> same, it's not an accident that in the same day you're seeing people go against the word of God, they're they're going against the order of creation mm-hmm. itself. Yeah, that's one. That's a, that's just a, now. There's something called now. You know, of course, you know the mystery of the shemitah. Well, there's something in the book of mysteries called the mystery of the smicha. Now, you don't have to get you don't, you don't have to you don't have to get the thing. But here's the thing, and that is this: that before a sacrifice could be offered up, the, yeah. the priest had to perform something called the shemicha, or the, and, and that was a that was a, the if it was a sin offering, had to take the sacrifice that was brought to the priest. Had to put his palms on its head, press it on its head, or touch the the, the sacrifice of the head, and it, that was, he was identifying with the sacrifice and and putting his sins on it, or the sins of the offer offering, and he would say that he would he would confess the sins on to, onto that. Now it happened on Yom Kippur, happened, but it happened other times. So here's the smicha. Now here's the question: If Messiah is our sin offering, which he is, could the smicha have been performed? And here's the mystery: Why was Messiah? Take betrayed to the Sanhedrin because in that was the priests of Israel. The priests of Israel are, are the ones who must deliver up the sacrifice. Even though they don't know what they're doing, they're doing it in sin. God is perfect. Mm-hmm. So here, and what did they do? It says when they pronounced that on him, they pronounced him guilty, they all started buffeting him in the Greek. It says buffeting him, according to the smicha, the hands of the priest must touch the head of the sacrifice. And it actually in the Greek says, it's, I mean, it says literally the palms, because it's buffeting. Palms, which is exactly what has to happen for the smicha. It has to make contact. Then they have to confess the sin onto the sacrifice. Well, well was that, that happening then? What happened? Caiaphas said he is guilty of what? Blasphemy. That wasn't, according to the mystery, that wasn't Messiah's sin. That was Caiaphas' sin. That was the high priest's sin. Wow. That was, and the priest represent Israel. Israel represents the world. That's the sin of man. Man is God, blasphemy. So they were performing without the smicha of God, and only then could he be offered up. And then what did they do? Like on Yom Kippur, the high priest stood in front of the multitude with two goats, one goat on his right, one goat on his left. And they would have to decide in front of a multitude, decide which one is going to escape and which one is going to die for sin. What happened when Messiah, before he died, Two men, not two goats, two men, Messiah, Barabbas, standing in front of the multitude. One is to escape, one is to be chosen to die. That is exactly what's performed on Yom Kippur. And so they do that, and so Messiah is the one who will die. But even more, there's an ancient writing in the rabbis which describe how they did this, and they said that the two goats had to look exactly alike, so you couldn't Hmm. tell tell them apart. So could it be that Messiah and Barabbas looked alike? Maybe, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Messiah is the, you would think, how could you have two so different things? Messiah is the son of the father. Barabbas is a criminal, a murderer. Yeah. But Barabbas, there's a mystery, another mystery here. We all hear about Barabbas. Barabbas is just Greek for a Hebrew name, Bar Abba, which means the son of the father. Hmm. So here you have the son of the father and you have the son of the father. Oh, and, 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 two alternatives of the same, yes. two, two pictures of the same yes. thing. Yes, and that's yeah. what, you know, when, when a sacrifice died, it was like they become one. You know, the, to the, the one who dies, is, you know, who dies for me, he becomes one with me. Messiah becomes one with me to die for me, that I might become one with him. So here you have Messiah dying the death of Barabbas, hmm. that we might become, we, we're, we're Barabbas, you know, we're, that we might become Barabba, the son of the father. Wow, if you find this interesting. Uh, we're, we're talking to Jonathan Kahn today, and <clears throat> his book of mysteries is basically 365 of the things you yes. just heard him talking about. If you can imagine multiplying by 365, that'll yeah. give you some idea of this yeah. book. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no end, Gary. I mean, and God is awesome. There, there's something called, there's some things that have to do with mysteries about prophecy and history. Yeah. 
there's something called the Haftorah mystery. Now let me tell you what that is. And a lot of people don't, have never heard that. But a Haftorah is every week, every Sabbath, in the synagogue, there is a chosen, appointed scripture read for that week. Uh-huh. The Haftorah is the prophet's portion. So this is, this is from ancient times. I mean, ancient times they were doing this. So every, from ancient times there's a, there's a scripture appointed for every Sabbath. Now, 1948, God fulfills prophecy. God brings back Israel. When did it happen? May 14th, it was announced. May 15th, it went into effect. May 14th, David Ben-Gurion makes that announcement to the world. What day was it? It was Friday. Mm-hmm. He announced it just before the Sabbath came because the Sabbath was coming. So he announces it and then it comes, Israel is born. Okay, May 15th. It was a Sabbath. So could it be, I wondered, could it be that God had an appointed scripture for 2,000 years to be on that, that day for that? Could it be? Well, here's the answer, Gary. This is the amazing thing is, yes. You know what the scripture was? On the birth of Israel, all around the world, all around every synagogue, being read, appointed, was Amos 9, and that day I will restore the fallen tabernacle of David. I will restore their captivity. They will come back to the land. They will build the land. They will sow. They will plant the land. Mm. And no one will pluck them out. Wow. <laughs> Amos was, 9, it was quoted in the yes. New Testament, the book of Acts. Yes, that's right. It's linked to the church as well. Yeah. But it's, but, and, and the church is linked to Israel. You know, here it is. And God had everything so exactly formed. That's the amazing thing of God. And you don't, the news will never tell you this, but that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and we are watching uh, right now, uh, 70 years later. Yes. 70 years yes. later. Yes. 70, uh, there's something very yeah. biblical about that number. Yes, uh, and, and, uh, and I know we'll talk about it another time, but, but and 70 nations gathered to go about <laughs> Jerusalem, and 70 yeah. is always there. And it's also going to be, at least in the Gregorian calendar, it'll be 50 years soon from, from 67, from, from Jerusalem. You know, so. We'll speak about Israel for a moment, because in my opinion, uh, at a certain point in, in the 20th century, uh, the world's attention was shifted to the nation Israel. It, it was a miracle. Yes. Uh, after World War II, yes. the thing that happened yes. was something that yes. couldn't happen. Yes. But God showed favor to the Jews. Yes. And and, and since then, the students of Bible prophecy have been watching Israel right. oh, every yeah. day. Oh yeah. And, and oh, I know yeah. you do too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the centerpiece of God's plan. It's the centerpiece of prophecy. It always has been, always will be. Yeah. Why are the nations focusing on this little speck size of New Jersey? You know, uh, why? Uh, yeah. It makes no sense. It makes only sense because of God. That's it. The, the, no, other, no other thing. Why? It, you go there, you go to Jerusalem, it's a bunch of rocks. But the, it's the most fought over place in the history of the world. It you is. Know? There's something about that. Yeah. There are several mysteries about that, by the way, you know, in the book of mysteries, too. The book of yeah. mysteries. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Jonathan mentioned a minute ago, you could call this a daily devotional because it has 300 You can do it. It's also that. Yeah, you could. You could yeah. and, and each of these mysteries challenges your, uh, yes. your imagination. Mm. Uh, uh, and this is a good thing because, yeah. because you, when you think of God, you need to stretch your mind a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He's way beyond everyday yeah. living. Yeah, the yeah the fir- very first uh, very first one you probably remember, Gary this is really to open your your mind in it, and that is that it's it's the mystery of the jar, the jar of infinity. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, just well, yeah. it's just I'm just it's not so, so much you've got but, my attention. No, well, it's, I didn't want to get your attention, <laughs> but but, but just, just to say that the the question that the teacher asked the disciple at the beginning, he says, "Can that which is little contain that which is big?" And he says, "Well, of course not, but you can. There's a mystery." How can we contain the fullness of God? We're, we're finite, He's infinite. There's a way. And that, that's, that's the opening of the book of mysteries to open up to all that God has. There's no end to God. Well see, already you've got my curiosity. <laughs> oh, I, do, do you know, you know Gav, the very first, and this is not as it was planned, but you know, the very, I mean you know this of course, the very first word, in the very first name in the Bible, Elohim, Elohim. And it, even that, the name of God means God. Yeah. That has a mystery right in there. Why is it Elohim? Elohim doesn't technically mean God. It means, literally, it means God's, but it's only one God. Yeah. It's God. But when the, when the Hebrew does that, it's telling you that the reality behind that word is so big, is so gigantic, that that word cannot contain it, cannot contain the infinite. So what it's saying is whatever you think of God is, he's more, he's bigger. Whatever you've known for theology, for two, it doesn't matter how old you are, he's, we, ha- we don't know the half of God. So it might be the Hebrew way of saying something infinite. Y- in, yes, infinite, yeah, really, infinite and gigantic. It's saying it breaks the, breaks the boundaries, breaks the boundaries. 
Um, and we also have mysteries of the rabbis in here. I could just, you know, yeah. Go, yeah. go, okay. That's well, a, that would be good. I, yeah, well, well, I don't you know, want you to give the whole book away. No, no, no. But I, I, if we were here for months, <laughs> we could not give that book away because it's too much. There's so much else. But, but the, there's the, uh, one of the things is there are also streams of mysteries where you're reading one and then you'll read another one that yeah. is another puzzle piece and at the end it all comes together. Well, there are streams of the hidden writings of the rabbis. Do you know, and most people don't, that the rabbis actually gave a time where, by which the Messiah of Israel had to come to Israel. They, they gave the time. And when was it? And they based it on, the mystery is called, and the book is called The Scepter of Judah. They, that, that, when, that thing is, that when the blessing of Judah is given in Genesis, it says, the, 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 it says the, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. And they tell you this is Messiah. So they said, they, they said this, that Messiah must come before we lose our power, before we lose, before we lose the power over life and death. So here's what happened. They record, they said, we lost that power in this year. And it was when the Romans took away from Judah the power of over life and death, capital, capital, you know that. So they took it out. And so, this, this, so the rabbi said Messiah had to come by that time. Mm-hmm. What, when was the time? They, they, they date it. They said it was just about the year 30 AD. 30 AD. Wow. Remember, Messiah, Jesus, the rabbis. I mean, if the rabbis are saying this, you got, I mean, they don't believe in Jesus and they're saying, and they don't even realize that how true is Messiah that he has come? How true. The mystery, uh, dare I say, that has not been revealed to to contemporary Israel at this point. No. But we're on the verge of something like that. I I think uh, that these mysteries will be open at a certain point. Yes, yeah. Daniel. Dan, Daniel says there are things that are being held until the end, you know, and, and I believe that's the case. I, I mean, I believe there are things that are to be revealed at the end, and I believe there's a reason why, you know, Israel and the church have been separated for 2,000 years, you know, but each has a part of the mystery. But when they start coming together, that's when certain things can come out. I believe we're in that time. We're in that time. The Book of Mysteries, and by the way, uh, we're offering this on our online uh, bookstore, prophecywatchers.com. Just go click on the bookstore, scroll down to Jonathan Kahn, and you'll find uh, the Book of Mysteries, and uh, we're offering that. We are uh, going to uh, take a moment, and I, I want you to explain what this is, because right here I have uh, four uh, beautifully uh, arranged cases of DVDs, uh, 12 DVDs about the mysteries. And, and in fact, let me just take volume four here. Uh, the end time revelation mysteries. Uh, the yud Hey vav Hey, The I Am, the I mystery. am mysteries. mysteries. Uh, and by the way, I've watched uh, not all of these, but many of them, and they're extremely well produced. I, I love what you've done. Mm. You are a very gifted oh. teacher. You get people's attention. but And you're a preacher, mm-hmm. but I, the highest compliment I can pay to you is that you're a teacher. Mm-hmm. Well, I think because I, when people w- yeah. uh, finish hearing mm-hmm. what you have to say, they have learned something. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, there's always more. There's always more. Those will go. Those and I. Those will go deepest to get deepest yeah. into some of these mysteries. They have. I, I just saw it by the way here. The Yoma. There's the Yoma mystery. The mystery of the leper king. The San secret of the Sanhedrin. The Masada mystery, really amazing thing that's hidden in Masada. Um, the Hanukkah end time mystery, which is really the yeah. most detailed blueprint of the end times. You know, um, there, there's even things about yeah the, the, about the mystery of Messiah's birth of when it was. And I mean, there's there's so much. Here. So that those are the if you want to get deep into the deep into some of the and some of those things that are that are introduced to the Book of Mysteries, that'll be the the deep, the deep thing there. And these are made for showing to, to a, a group. And you can you can <clears throat> yeah you can do it yourself. You, you can do it for yourself. You can sure do it for can. a Bible study, a church. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I was yeah. watching them by myself and I was thinking <laughs> there should be 30 other people in this room right oh, now cool. because they need to hear about this. Cool. this. So uh, again, uh, go to the online bookstore, <coughs> prophecywatchers.com and scroll down to uh, Jonathan Kahn and you'll find the Book of Minis- Mysteries and you'll also find a package uh, that includes all of these DVDs, uh, further explanations and demonstrations of the mysteries, and the book as well. And by the way, not only will you get the book, but you'll get a copy of the Prophecy Watcher. So uh, we have a package whereby you can get the DVDs, the book of mysteries, and a copy of our magazine. By the way, I'm thinking of something. You're going to be speaking. 
at our prophecy conference, the Blessed Hope Prophecy Forum, October 13th through 15th uh, uh, this year. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned to me earlier, that's a long time. A lot could happen mm-hmm. between yes. now and oh, then. Yeah. I asked Jonathan, what are you going to be speaking on? He says, who knows? <laughs> we'll, <see. laughs> well, especially now, so much is happening. Yep. So who knows? I mean, I said, let's see what happens next week. You know, and then let, let's go from there. So much is happening. Yeah. And, and I'll just a, a note, Gary, yeah. with, with that people, uh, if they, people, I, the, my, my biggest blessing in that is I was actually doing a book signing and the person next to me says, I got to tell you, I've been witnessing to my friend for years, never, I gave him a gift, I gave him the Book of Mysteries and they came to the Lord. So people are coming to the Lord through the Book of Mysteries. So it's great to give to people, you know, and at the end there's actually a call to salvation because the, the disciple, the wanderer gets saved. So it's great to give to people as a gift whether they're saved or not saved. That's, that's my biggest thing. I mean, to take it for yourself, it can change your life if you apply it. But bless other people. That's that's our that's our the biggest joy for me. So, what brings people to Christ, uh, in your opinion? Uh, and we've all witnessed. Uh, yeah. Sometimes people receive Christ. Sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes their curiosity is slightly ar- ar- aroused, and yeah. you think, well, maybe next week or next yeah. month they will. Um, but when you uh, confront someone with uh, something mysterious that pulls them yeah, along, something they correct. haven't thought about that's before. That's correct. That may be that is correct why because, this book works that way. Because they don't feel like they're being hit over the head like, yeah. or you're being accusing them. Like, wait a minute, did you hear, have you ever heard about the mystery of the, what? What do you mean? <laughs> what, what is that? What do you mean yeah. there's something behind it? And that's how people who are not saved, it doesn't matter. There's no barrier there because they're coming in. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know? yeah. Mysteries. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think God has given you a, a way of looking at Scripture that, mm. uh, that, that is you. extremely compelling. Um, we have about a minute left. Okay. Modern Israel is a mystery to many people. Yes. Uh, they can't understand what's going on over there. A lot of people don't have not been educated about Israel. Mm-hmm. They think the little upstart nation uh, probably won't last very long. Mm-hmm. It'll be there for just